All right, let's get the final underway here for what I'm calling my father's uh, favorite. What am I calling it anyway? My father's four favorites, father's favorite four, something like that. His four favorite hockey players of all time, Tim Horton, Bobby Clark. Uh, their teams have been eliminated, the 63 Toronto Maple Leafs and the 76 Philadelphia Flyers. And so what's left here for the final? The 2013 Pittsburgh Penguins featuring Sidney Crosby, his uh, dad's active favorite hockey player. And the 1984 Edmonton Oilers with... I was thinking about this actually um, coming into the final, and I did mention to HockeyFan76 that I'd try to remember to say this in this video, uh, video here. Uh, the reason... I was actually kind of hoping for an Edmonton-Toronto uh, final, so you know I'm not rigging this, because if I were, that, that would be the final. And the reason being that I think that, though those are his four favorite hockey players of all time, I think if picked, like forced to eliminate two of those four... I think the two you would be left with would be Horton and Gretzky. So it's a bit of a shame that at least this time those two are not going to, uh, to you know, to show down or to face off. Maybe they'll have to meet in some other competition. What Edmonton has to do is win a qualifying tournament and get back into my League of Champions and Presidents, where the 1963 Toronto Maple Leafs currently reside, the League of Champions and Presidents that's uh, getting ready gearing up for season three uh no time in the near future but again before too long i'll, I'll get that underway there will be more on that soon anyway so this one here goodness it's uh almost two minutes in now and i've yet to uh, play a second here of hockey so was there anything else here anything else anything like a pre-game uh preliminary thing that i wanted to go through if there is it escapes me here at the moment so yeah, let's just get this one underway then. We have 2013 Sidney Crosby up against 1984 uh, Wayne Gretzky. And we have one minute here to uh, take off the clock here to start things off. I just, for the thumbnail, I just decided that it'd be a, it'd look a little nicer with less, less white on the whiteboard like that. For whatever reason, just putting a little more color there. So anyway, uh, scoring chances. Yes, so scoring chances here are arrived at. With, uh, with a flip of 1-19 to for Pittsburgh, 34 in the power play. Marc-Andre Fleury is getting the start here in net. I actually overrode, with apologies to Andy Moog and fans of Andy Moog, I overrode his getting the start for Game 1 and decided to go with Grant Fewer instead. I just like the idea of a flower Fewer showdown here to kick off Game 1. And should either of these goaltenders not perform all that well, I'll have no... You know, I will without hesitation go to Thomas Vokun for Pittsburgh or... Uh, the aforementioned Andy Moog uh, for Boston. Uh, Andy Moog. I think it, when I said it there, it just sounded almost like Andy. Anyway, uh, for the Edmonton Oilers, uh, 73 to 100 for their scoring chances. So they have a decided advantage, actually, here in game one at least. And 58 or higher will uh, give them a power play chance. However, here, just a minute into it, in the first minute, really, of the hockey game, we have a scoring chance for the Pittsburgh Penguins. So let's go ahead and resolve that. The chance goes to player C, Pascal Dupuis, who was really prominent actually against the 63 Maple Leafs. Dupuis has it here in the face-off circle. Dupuis has a rebound. Fewer's being tested right off the bat. And the rebound is five to the shooter and Fewer's rebound rating is only a four. So somewhat to my surprise, at least if no one else's, Pascal Dupuis has gone and uh, gotten the Pittsburgh Penguins here of 2013 ahead one nothing. Put them on the board immediately here. So I guess an early defensive lapse from the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, scoring, okay. Do we believe that Pascal Dupuis scored seven seconds into this or not? I'm not so sure. Maybe I subtract the seven from a minute instead of adding it to the zero, and I say 53 seconds in. Sounds a little more plausible to me than seven seconds in. That's kind of hard for me to believe. Sorry, but it is. L1, D1 I'm looking at, so it's going to be Pascal Dupuis from six. That's Crosby with the primary assist. And then the D1, Latang. So Latang who scored the game winner uh, in overtime at the end of game two, actually, to bring Pittsburgh here. Um, it's one of those things too, where I, uh, I disallowed a penalty late in the period and the third period and the overtime maybe had the penalty occurred earlier in the overtime period. I also would have disallowed it, but because it was already a handful of minutes into the sudden death, I decided I would finally permit a penalty 
And that was, you know, Toronto's demise because Pittsburgh and Chris Letang scored on the power play. Anyway, Letang gets the secondary assist here. 53 seconds feels more like it to me, so that's what I'm going to go with Dupuis from Crosby and Letang here, just 53 seconds in. Anyway, three more are off the clock now. That's that's one that Edmonton could have used. 77, they can use this one also here. Chance for the Oilers to tie not that long after. So we're looking at play Rye, Willie Lindstrom here. Lindstrom has it at the uh, blue line, and Lindstrom will be unable to score on Mark andre Fleury from the blue line we take three more minutes off the clock up to minute seven now with the 12 so it's been all scoring chances here back and forth early that hardly surprises me actually in a game featuring these teams uh so player d we're looking at Sidney crosby himself here sid the kid also from the blue line and look at that Sidney crosby rifles one from just inside the blue line and we have a two nothing hockey game here for the 2013 pittsburgh penguins early so crosby let's see the time of his goal i'm looking at uh, 651 and uh, L2-D2, so we'll put the second defense pair out there with Crosby. Uh, Chris Kunitz with the primary assist, though, and then line. So I'll give an assist to Pascal Dupuis as well. Crosby from Kunitz and Dupuis at 651. So Crosby has a goal and an assist so far. Kunitz now with an assist. And Dupuis as well. Crosby and Dupuis each with a goal and an assist there. So anyway, we take another minute off the clock here up to minute eight. And 55, we could have our game's first penalty. Looking to the Edmonton Oilers, I see S there, Yeri Curry. So Yeri Curry, I'm just going to, again, the first one I see when I glance at the card, I'm going to assume that Yeri Curry is in the box here for the next couple. The first power play minute, could it actually be the Oilers doubling up here? So uh, who do we get this time? We look here to U and Z3. I don't see a Z3. I'm looking for a U. I see Willie Lindstrom there as well. So he's going to join Curry for the next minute. So uh, Pittsburgh will have a ridiculous power play scoring chance in this one. I think it's either 39 or 40 for him trying to jog my memory there but let's just flip and add another minute and see what we uh, get here 88 that's how about a shorthanded chance for the Edmonton Oilers uh player E who is player E and what is his penalty rating Paul Coffey Paul Coffey shorthanded I can see that given his wheels uh so Paul Coffey here uh shorthanded as I said and for this one here I, I don't actually flip the check location on shorthanded so Paul Coffey has not scored watch the next one be a shorthanded goal uh, but that, uh, let's see, so five on four for another minute, actually. Uh, with the, that would have been a save check. With the 89, um, so with the 89, that's going to be yet another shorthanded chance for Edmonton. This happened, actually, in the series against Toronto. What is going on here with uh, with Pittsburgh's uh, power play? Um, so this shorthanded chance goes to uh, player B on Edmonton. That is Glenn Anderson. So Anderson out here shorthanded. And uh, he's unable to score as well. So we get another minute coming off the clock now with uh, with uh, Edmonton having successfully killed both of those penalties, the five on four and five on three there for a minute. And there could actually be a penalty back the Penguins way now, taking one evidently in frustration. Matt Cook. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I'm looking at the wrong spot. Sorry. Still Matt Cook. So Matt Cook is going to the box now for a couple. Do you really want to play with fire? Um no, it's going to be a chance here for the Edmonton Oilers in the first minute of power play time. Still looking to get on the board are the Oilers. Player J, that is Yeri Curry. Now that he is out of the box, Yeri Curry has it in the slot on the power play. And it's, uh, well, Fleury actually got a piece of it. There's going to be a rebound. And for the rebound, three to the right wing. That's Curry himself, but Fleury's going to be able to stop Yeri Curry there in a rebound. It's Fleury shutting down Curry. We get another minute off the clock here with that 20. And uh, that's going to be actually almost but not quite a shorthanded chance for Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh somewhat miraculously now has turned aside the Edmonton uh, power play effort in up to 17 minutes. Now with the 96, it's going to be Edmonton again here with the L. Uh, L is Yaroslav Puzar on Edmonton's first line. Puzar has it in the face-off circle. He's unable to score from the face-off circle. That would have given Gretzky a surefire assist. Let's go. Gretzky who had... Uh, I know he had five points in Edmonton's first seven goals up against the Philadelphia Flyers. In the final three, I, know, I think he had at least another point or two, so like six or seven points total for Gretzky in that series. Keep in mind that was stretched across two games, but those are still pretty impressive numbers. Um, so anyway, up to, uh, to minute 19, here we go. And uh, there is no scoring chance there for either team, and that's a four-minute card, so that puts us well into intermission. The score is 2 nothing Pittsburgh. They got a couple of quick, sneaky uh, early goals here. It was Pascal Dupuis in the opening minute, Sidney Crosby about six minutes after that. We have a 2-0 uh, Pittsburgh game here after 20. I'm going to pause, sip, and shuffle. 
So for a little half intermission report, uh, I gave Edmonton home ice in game one. There isn't really home ice advantage in a series like this, but because Edmonton won their semifinal a little more decisively, that's what I decided minutes you know ago before turning the camera on as I was setting it up, that uh, that was the idea that I had, that I would just give Edmonton home ice for game one. Of course, Pittsburgh will get it for the second game. Uh, so anyway... Um, let's do a little of this and then we'll grab this other little pile here and shuffle it as well So again in that opening frame Crosby and Dupuis each with a pair of points Chris Letang had an assist Chris Letang who again scored the game-winning goal to get pit in overtime in sudden death overtime at the end of game two of two to get the Pittsburgh Penguins here uh, in the first place and again in case uh, you didn't catch either semifinal because I <laughs> By the looks, the numbers of it, you know, not many did. Uh, but if you, so if you're just watching this one, which is completely fine, but, uh, or listening to it, it's, uh, this here is a best of two. And at the end of two games, it's uh, much like the NHL did actually in the playoffs in the 1920s. It is most goals wins. I think they did it in the late teens as well. It's going to be a two games, most goals wins um, playoff series. So that definitely favors Pittsburgh here after. 20 minutes, 20 of 120 or more. The uh, the Pittsburgh-Toronto series need, needed about 126, 127 minutes to um, conclude. That was a really tight one, uh, Pittsburgh and Toronto. And both teams were wrong to uh, to spot the other uh, power play. Um, a lot of the a lot of the goals in that were scored on the power play. So anyway, for both teams. And Edmonton just got the jump on Philadelphia, and it seemed like the Flyers of 76 could never really come back in that one. So I actually don't know how many. I, I was talking in that one actually as well about Dave Semenko and fighting. I Come to think of it, I don't think, and I was looking at some of Semenko's fights on YouTube. I think with Semenko, it was that he was, and correct me if I'm wrong, because again, I was, if alive at all, a toddler at best then. I think Dave Semenko was just, he's one of those guys kind of like Milan Lucic today. Lucic will fight sometimes. He would fight more often, but he's so physically imposing and so hard hitting anyway that, and so intimidating, nobody wants to fight him. Like that's the reason why I think Lucic. He's getting a bit older now too, but I mean, I think Semenko. I think it was kind of similar. He was so hard hitting and so physically imposing. Just even in a scrum, you'd probably feel the strength and the size of him in a scrum and think twice about it. I don't think I don't think many people wanted to fight him. So uh, until he got a little older and Bob Prober cleaned his clock. But anyway. Um, it's interesting reading the the collective opinions on YouTube, but yes, I did watch both. The, I think they only fought twice, uh, Probert and Semenko. The first one, Semenko definitely did get a bit of an early premature jump on him. Anyway, we're we're back here for period two, and uh, we're going to take a minute off the clock, much like we did here for period one. So, uh, 32, that's going to be chanceless for either side here. Two more minutes coming off the clock now. And with the two, it'll be the Pittsburgh Penguins here looking to add to their lead and go up by three. Player W on Pittsburgh is actually Tanner Glass. Well, he's technically still on the card. He's not quite reserves. Tanner Glass has it at the blue line where he's unable to score. We play on with three more minutes coming off the clock. Now that puts us at minute six or just about up to it. 73, just barely a scoring chance for the Edmonton Oilers. Player H on Edmonton, we're looking at... Dave Hunter there on line two. Hunter has it at the face-off circle. Hunter actually gets Edmonton on the board here and manages to break through and fool Flurry for the first time here in this uh, series. Hunter scores here. It's five. Uh, well, let's find out exactly. At 5.15, I look to L3D1. I will take L2D1. So Mark Messier getting the primary assist and Dave Hunter's goal. And then with the six... I'll flip one more card, actually, center and right wing. So I'm going to give Glenn Anderson the other assist. It is Dave Hunter from Mark Messier and Glenn Anderson here at 515 of period two. And it's a 2-1 game now for Pittsburgh. So Edmonton is in this hockey game. And another minute comes off the clock. There is no scoring chance for either team, so we get another minute. And the 83, that will be a chance for the Edmonton Oilers. Player D, that is Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky with it at the blue line. He winds up and fires, and look at that. The second flurry fooled again here from the blue line. Not sure if that would have been deflected. I know that I shouldn't change the score there for Pittsburgh. So we actually have a tie game now. Uh, Wayne Gretzky has scored from the blue line. 
Gretzky with a classic slap shot, keeping it simple. I'm going to say it's 7.34, so a minute or two minutes and 19 seconds after that other goal. I look to L1-D1. Gretzky, he can't assist on his own goal. But his line, however, so Yeri Curry with an assist, and let's see if a defense comes up. Nope. So I'm, I'm actually going to keep that. I'm going to say here 10 minutes into period two. And uh, we don't have a chance for either side here. Again, that was gr straight up Gretzky from Curry at, uh, what was it, 7.34. Anyway, so no chance here. We're going to take two more minutes off the clock now. We're up to minute 12. And with the 29, that's no chance either way either. So two more minutes now, up to minute 14. Up to minute 14 here. Penalty away. Let's see here for Pittsburgh. ZX2. ZX2, the officiating likes the Penguins. They've gotten away with another. Another minute comes off the clock. We're up to minute 15 here in period two. And with the 13, Pittsburgh has converted that missed call into a scoring chance now here. Player S on Pittsburgh. That is Sidney Crosby. Sidney Crosby from the blue line. Can he also score from there? He's unable to. Uh, so three more coming off the clock now. Just two minutes to go here in period two of the 2-2 tied hockey game. Hold on now. Hold on now. Oh, that... Okay, so penalty B, home and away. Let's see here. Who, uh, for the home team, I don't see anybody with a Z3. So two and two, five for fighting. Does Pittsburgh have a fight rating of two? Tanner Glass has taken exception. I'm going to say Dave Semenko again. So Tanner Glass now squaring off with Dave Semenko. Guys in different eras just want to find out how they would do against Dave Semenko. Uh, so again, we'll, we'll put Glass and Semenko in the box for a handful. Try to remember, make a mental note up until about three minutes into period three. And we play on here five and five for another minute or two where we get two more minutes off the clock here up to period two's end. 59, that's no chance either way. That's not a zero minute card. So I'm going to say second intermission here. And so much like Pittsburgh in um, the first period here in the second period, Edmonton with uh, two unanswered goals. And so we have a 2-2 two -two, uh, contest here after two periods of six or more. So it's funny to me, at least, when I pause and shuffle, I think of things that I wanted to say that I had thought that I would talk about uh, prior to the game, and then I just um, don't uh, get around to them. I guess I was going to talk, do a little bit of project talk and just talk about how this is kind of a convenient pause for me right now, just before playing out the... Uh, the final series with the one other uh, what if uh, project that I'm doing and then also I like to hit the pause button sometimes on projects like season replays as well so with my 1924-25 NHL replay I'm um, two thirds exactly right now two thirds of the way through uh, the regular season part of it it is a 30 game regular season all the teams have played 20 games so I figured it was kind of a good time to uh, hit the pause button take a breather and also maybe just kind of play out something else like this, some other idea that had just been kind of kicking around in uh, my mind for a little while. And so that's why I'm here doing this here at the moment here. So anyway, I think, I hope these cards are shuffled well enough. Again, after shuffling them individually in their smaller piles, I might, uh, again, I do a few... Um, I do some small cuts. I do some big cuts. I know I'm not a great shuffler, actually. I don't have good card shuffling hands. But uh, I, uh, again, I do like playing with cards. I do like kind of the tactile stuff over the electronic. And not that I haven't used card flippers and dice rollers as well. Kind of, I guess it really depends what I'm in the mood for. But more often than not, I would be in the mood to use actual cards than a flipper. Though I'm very grateful that the flippers are there for when I would rather use them. Uh, what I'm referring to specifically would be like, say, Andy Lewis's card flippers that he has for all kinds of different hockey uh, games. And of course, there's the shootout helper with a flipper as well, which I do not use. But, uh, you know, I know that that certainly helps a lot of people who would want to use it. So anyway, here it is. It's 2-2 two, two after two periods and headed into period three now with this uh, dead even hockey game where we get a minute off the clock here to start things and the 16 that's going to be a scoring chance for the Pittsburgh Penguins 87 Crosby's number but uh that's going to be actually Bo Bennett here in line three Bo Bennett with it in the slot though and much like Imperia one here Pittsburgh strikes hard and early dangerous in the opening minute 
Uh, that time's going to be 21 seconds. I think I will permit that. And L3D2 is convenient also for our purposes here. Brooks or pick with the primary assist and line. So I'm going to give it to Orc picks uh, pairing mate there, Matt Niskanen. So Bennett from or pick and Niskanen here, just 21 seconds into period three. And that means I have to change the score to three here for Pittsburgh. So three, two. Uh, we get two more minutes off the clock here. Now up to pe or up to period three. Well, we're in period three. Up to minute three we go. And it's going to be a penalty potentially to the home Edmonton Oilers looking to VZ2. The first V I see is Charlie Huddy. I, I guess I, start, I was going bottom to top and not the other way around. Let's put Wayne Gretzky in the box, damn it. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky has taken exception and taken a penalty here because his penalty rating is V. Here at minute three in period three with Pittsburgh up uh, three to two. Anyway. The first power play minute here, 35, ooh, just out of their five on four range. And the second power play minute is not a so. It's going to be back to even strength. And Gretzky exits the box. And uh, we get two more minutes off the clock here. So we're up to, right? So we're up to 41. Yes, we're up to minute seven now. And uh, with the 89, that's going to be a chance here for the eager, hungry Edmonton Oilers. They don't want to lose game one. They know this is a two games. Most goals. Dave Semenko, who would have exited the box after that from that fight, that penalty would have expired a few minutes ago. So it's Dave Semenko here. Semenko has it all the way in the slot where the defensemen on Pittsburgh are afraid to contest him. And Dave Semenko has tied the game here for the Edmonton Oilers. So, uh, here we go. So, Semenko, he strong, strong arms uh, Chris Letang, and uh, he gets inside on Flurry, and he has made this a 3-3 hockey game. Uh, so, let's see here. We have, it's L2-D2, but it's actually L4-D2 that I'm going to look to with the R5. No one in Semenko's line has that. Greg and Heidi also don't have that. I guess Semenko's center, Tom Rolston, I'll give him an assist and uh, Semenko himself is the left wing, and there are no number sixes, but I think I just flipped three cards for assists. I forgot to take the time in the first one, so I'm going to take the time in this one and say that at 6.55 in period three, it is Dave Semenko tying this game at three here from Tom Ralston, and we play on here. We actually are going to stay in the same minute. 66, that's no scoring chance either way. Three more coming off the clock. Ten minutes to go here in game one of two, and 75, that's going to be a scoring chance for the Edmonton Oilers, though. Uh, player M on Edmonton is uh, Randy Gregg from the second line, from the second defense unit. Gregg appropriately has it at the blue line, and how often have we seen this in this game? So, Gregg, I don't know, Flurry a little shaky on that one. If this were anything other than a one-goal game, I might consider actually pulling Andre Flurry. I think I'll leave him in for the time being, but two goals surrendered from the blue line is not a good look. However you slice it, so Randy Gregg... Let's see here, 43, so at 9.43, I looked at L1-D2. It is Greg from Gretzky, I'm going to say. And, uh, yeah, let's give it to Yaroslav Puzar as well. So Greg from Gretzky and Puzar here at, uh, what did I say, 9.43, I think, of period three. It's 4-3 for Edmonton. And another minute comes off the clock here, up to minute 11 with the one. That's going to be a chance for Pittsburgh to come back and tie right away. Player E on the Pittsburgh Penguins is reserved, so... As I've said in some other uh, other videos about this, I'm just going to flip again. I don't want to use reserves for this year best on best tournament in a time warp. So another flip here. I get B this time. B is James Neal on line two for Pittsburgh. James Neal has it in the slot, and James Neal has delivered here. He has uh, tied the game here at four, and uh, let's see how long after the last goal that was. So 10.58, the exact time. L2-D2 I will look to. So if Guinea Malkin picks up an assist here, I think that's his first point in this whole tournament. And uh, the six, that is no one. So let me flip one more here. Left defenseman there. So Niskanen with another assist in this game. And uh, that would have been James Neal for me with Guinea Malkin and Matt Niskanen here. I think I said 10.58 or something like that for the time. Anyway, moving on here. So two more minutes off the clock now, up to minute 13. I'm not keeping stats in this. With the 14, it's going to be Pittsburgh with a chance to take the lead once more. If Kenny Malkin, he likes collecting points in a series like this. Now Malkin has it in the face-off circle where Grant Fewer is able to stop him. So another minute coming off the clock now, up to minute 14. And 37, that'll be no chance for the Penguins or the Oilers. Three more minutes now, up to minute 17. And with that three, that's going to be a chance for Pittsburgh again to pull ahead. Uh, player H, that's Matt Cook. 
Matt Cook here. I guess I can't just say his name without giggling. In the face-off circle, Matt Cook and Fewer is going to have to make a big save. Cook evidently crashing the net. Let's see if Fewer can keep the puck from crossing the line. 11. I looked at Fewer's save range, and unfortunately, Fewer has surrendered that marker there. And uh, he's pretty upset about that, but Matt Cook has actually forced the puck over the goal line one way or another, whether it was with his stick or some other limb or appendage or a bit of his gear. And uh, we get the time of this goal here. It's going to be at 16-17 and L2-D1. So Cook from James Neal. And I'll flip one more here for assists to see. And then line, so if Guinea Malkin will give him another assist. Cook from Neil and Malkin here at 16-17 of period three. Two more minutes off the clock now, just a minute to go here in game one. No scoring chance for either side. We'll take two more. And actually, I will permit this here because it is the third and final period. 67, that's no chance either, and this is not a zero minute, so... So this year final is half complete. This video has been a little longer. I'll have to try to go faster in the second game. I mean, whatever. It's the final, so maybe it should be a little longer than, than the uh, semifinal. But uh, it is, well, 5-4 is your final score here in game one. And I will try to hit the pause button and not the stop button uh, on the camera this time. Okay, th this is uh, the setup for game two. It is Andy Moog who is actually taken to the crease for the Edmonton Oilers. And Fleury will stay in goal for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, Edmonton has a small advantage in this one, but I mean, they had an even bigger advantage in game one and obviously it, it ultimately didn't pay off for them. So just because you have the numeric advantage doesn't necessarily mean that you're, go you are uh, going to win once the cards, uh, once everything flips out. So anyway, here we are early, um, not even early at the beginning of game two, halfway through this, uh, best of two probably here, although I mean, it's close, it's tight. It's a, it's a one goal, uh, one goal game right now. One goal competition or contest. And uh, Gretzky had at least a goal and an assist in game one. Uh, Crosby as well had the same. Dave Semenko scored a goal. Matt Cook scored a goal. Uh, Dave Hunter as well there in line two for um, Edmonton. And uh, James Neal as well had responded for Pittsburgh and Bo Bennett as well. Dupuis actually kicked off the scoring early in the period as well. Pittsburgh had a couple of early period goals, so watch for them early here in these 20-minute frames. Anyway, let's get things going here. So we're going to take one minute here first, so we might even get a scoring chance again here in the opening minute. 63, that means that we don't. Now that I've said that, three more minutes coming off the clock here up to minute four. And 93, it's going to be Pittsburgh here with the first chance in game two. Pittsburgh, we look to player U. Player U is uh, Simon Dupre, actually, in the third defensive pairing, who had him getting the first scoring chance. He gets it to the blue line, and my goodness, what a theme. What a theme in this. So Moog is little better than Fewer, although, come to think of it, it was Flurry surrendering. Uh, it's funny how themes arise, though. Flurry let in a couple uh, from far away that he probably should have had in the opening game. It ultimately didn't cost Pittsburgh, but here early in the second game... Um, it is Simon Dupre, and uh, he, I'm looking to, uh, I guess, D3 and somebody, maybe Tanner Glass. Let's see here at, what, 347. Uh, six, uh, okay, six and uh, right wing. Glass is a left wing. Um, and left defenseman, that would be Dupre. Should I just say to pray unassisted? Why not? To pray unassisted here at 347 after all that. Let's just move on here. So we're up to minute six now here in period one of game two. And uh, it's uh, 59. That's no chance either way. So four more minutes coming off the clock here up to minute 10. We go with a uh, penalty potentially here versus the Pittsburgh Penguins. So we're looking here. We have a ZX2. They don't, don't have a Z. They don't have an X2. So three more minutes here coming off the clock after no penalty uh, for the Pittsburgh Penguins, 81. That's going to be a scoring chance for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Player C, Pascal Dupuis. Dupuis has it in the slot. And Dupuis is once again taking the lead here for the Pittsburgh Penguins. This is now a 6-5 uh, hockey game. So Pascal Dupuis is somewhat prominent. I mean, he does play in the top line here for Pittsburgh with Sidney Crosby. But in both this and the series against Toronto, he's just figuring um, into a lot of scoring chances. Uh, the time of his goal, 12.04, and I'm looking to L1-D2, Sidney Crosby getting another point there. That would also be Crosby and the R5. That is actually Chris Kunitz. So Dupuis from Crosby and Kunitz here at 12.04. 6.5 Pittsburgh here in period one of game two. Three more off the clock now, up to minute 16. 
And uh, 83, that's going to be Pittsburgh again. Where were these chances when Edmonton needed them? So in game one, I mean. So Pittsburgh here, player K, guess who? It's Pascal Dupuis. Pascal Dupuis with it here in the faceoff circle. He doesn't score from there. Andy Moog trying to sharpen up here. And another uh, minute here off the clock. And we get an 86. So Moog will have to remain sharp because this is another Pittsburgh chance. I look to Z. Uh, so Brendan Morrow there on line three with a Brendan Morrow from the faceoff circle. Morrow doesn't score from there. So Moog does indeed come up with the stop. We're up to a minute 19 now here with the 12. That's going to finally be a chance for Edmonton. Have they weathered the storm? They're back with Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky here with it in the slot. And that's a done deal. Wayne Gretzky has tied the game here at six with his second goal of this competition. We have a 6-6 hockey game here. At the tail end of period one, 1808 specifically, and uh, L1D2. So Gretzky from Yaroslav Puzar and Yeri Curry here at 1808. We're tied at six. And we'll take one more minute off the clock. Let's see if we get anything in the final minute. 16 says that we do. It goes Edmonton's way again. Let's see, can they exit the uh, first period with a lead? If Marc Messier has something to say about it, the answer will be yes. Messier with it in the faceoff dot. And let's see, Fleury's going to have to come up with a big save here in order to keep this game tied. And six, he is unsuccessful. So actually going into... I guess you might call it the fourth intermission of six or more. Uh, Marc Messier has scored to put Edmonton ahead. The time of the goal, 1944. And uh, Gretzky, or sorry, Messier rather, uh, from, um, well, Glenn Anderson and Paul Coffey. So Messier from Anderson and Paul Coffey sounds easily conceivable to me here in 1944 of period one. And so one thing that I've liked about this series, I've noticed now the team's it, they've remained close, and they've kind of traded leads now multiple times. So um, that's, you know, something, kind of one of the things that I would have been hoping for here. Anyway, I think that's uh, actually, if this is not a zero-minute carb, which it is not, so this is first intermission, and in order to save time to cut down on a little time and make, and make this video not too long, um, I'm going to uh, pause. All right, back for period two, just uh, do some end of intermittent course. Now that I turn the camera on, I can't shuffle to save my life. Imagine that. Uh, I thought I'd just do a few quick period ending shuffles. Again, just for fun, just to show you that, that this isn't a rigged deck. Not that I think that anybody would think that I am somehow rigging this uh, deck. But, um, you know, just, just, I don't know, just, you know, something I wanted to do. Anyway, so... After uh, Pittsburgh was ahead 5-4 there at the end of Game 1, it was a 2-1 Edmonton period here in Period 1 of Game 2. And so, right, 3-1? Yeah, i got to do my math there a little better. Edmonton scored thrice in that opening frame, and uh, they are now up 7-6. So we get our start here as soon as we return the pawn to start, and uh, we get to get three minutes here off the clock to start Period 2. Uh, 97, that's going to be a chance for the Penguins right off the bat. It goes to play around, play around here on Pittsburgh. That's Tyler Kennedy on line three. Tyler Kennedy with it in the slot. Tyler Kennedy scores in the slot. So, of course, we get a tie game here, 7-7. Seven, seven. Bit of a goal fest here now. And uh, let's see here. Uh, Kennedy at 49. So, at 249 here in period two from right wing. Right wing is Craig Adams. And left wing is UC Jokinen. So, Kennedy from Adams and Jokinen here. In, uh, well, in game two here, period two of game two. Three more minutes off the clock. Now we get up to minute six and five. That's going to be a chance for Edmonton because, of course, player H on Edmonton. Dave Hunter looking to add another goal. From the blue line, Hunter, where a lot of goals have been scored, but Hunter's unable to uh, score from there. So up to eight minutes now, and we get, whoops, I almost flipped two cards. Sorry about that. 37, no chance either way. Another minute coming off the clock now here up to minute nine. And 18, that'll be a chance for the Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton player D is Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky with it in the faceoff circle. Gretzky, the save by Marc-Andre Fleury. So here, minute 10 here, halfway through uh, game two. That will be a chance for the Pittsburgh Penguins, a chance to once again take the lead. Uh, Matt Cook here. Matt Cook with another chance. Cook who scored in game one in the faceoff circle. And look at this. This time he doesn't need a save check. It is Matt Cook. He did it to Fewer, and now he's doing it to Moog. It is Matt Cook. Maybe he's uh, from the net front, able to redirect the puck in from the face-off circle. And Matt Cook, it goes in off his shoulder, and uh, it's going to be an 8-7 hockey game here, just over halfway through at the exact time 
uh, of the goal. Let's get to 10, or sorry, 952, and we look to L2, D2, R5. So if Guinea Malkin assisting on Cook's goal with the primary, Cook is the left wing. The right wing, however, is James Neal. James Neal with the secondary. It's Cook from Malkin and Neal at 9.52 here in Game 2, Period 2. Anyway, another minute coming off the clock now. So up to minute 11. There could be a penalty to Edmonton here as a result. Edmonton, I looked at WY2. I see the Y2, uh, Ken Lindsman there. So I'll assume that he is in the box for a pair. And the first power play minute. Look at this. Up to minute 12. Pittsburgh will have a chance here on the power play. Player L on the power play, that is James Neal. That's conceivable. James Neal has it in the slot. And finally, for what feels like the first time in a long time, Pittsburgh has their two-goal lead restored. I know they had it in period one of game one, and I'm pretty sure it's been a one-goal game bouncing back and forth since then between the teams trading the lead. But uh, here on the power play, it is James Neal. And uh, third period, but I mean there was still... You know, about eight minutes to go, so I don't feel too bad about that. Plus, the penalty was taken here, I guess. So, anyway, James Neal, the exact time of the goal, 11.22 for him. I'm going to overlook overlook that and just say L2-D1. Uh, Nobody there. Center, that's Evgeny Malkin. And right defenseman, that'd be Paul Martin. So, uh, uh, Neal from Malkin and Martin here at 11.22. Pittsburgh up by two. This is dire now for Edmonton all of a sudden. And we get a minute off the clock here, so up to a minute 13. And uh, that could be a penalty, actually, to the Edmonton Oilers, so they're frustrated. Let's see, W, W, Kevin Lowe. Kevin Lowe going to the box for a pair, whereby we get a shorthanded chance, actually, a minute into it. And that chance will go to Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky here in the penalty kill. He's unable to score shorthanded. So uh, we take another minute off the clock. We're again, Edmonton, where have we seen this before? The Oilers. But again, they were home last time. Uh, that this happens. So the Oilers with another shorthanded chance. This time it goes to Pat Hughes. Uh, so Pat Hughes shorthanded. He's unable to score as well, but they kill the penalty effectively. Another minute off the clock. However, what also is happening here is they are running out of time. 35. That's no scoring chance for the Edmonton Oilers. And 12. So we get it up to minute 17 now. Uh, with a 30, that's also no scoring chance for the Edmonton Oilers. So three more minutes taken off the clock now here, and let's see. We uh, we're gonna have we might have a brawl here at the end of 20. Let's see. Uh, we're looking to uh, well penalty B versus home and away Z3. There is no Z3. There is no Z3. So we're going to avoid that. And unless I'm about to play seven periods i'm pretty sure though at certain times there i started talking like edmonton was running out of time but i'm pretty sure that they do have um another uh, 20 minutes here anyway to uh well to i guess score at least two goals in order to uh, bring this you know to uh send this into sudden death so anyway um i'm gonna sip Okay, so 37 minutes in might actually be a good time, especially for two uh, games of shootout here. So I guess I have to quit talking so much. But I want this to be something other than just any, you know, game of shootout. So this is supposed to be, you know, the final, I guess the final there of a short tournament. So anyway, Pittsburgh is up by two here going into the final period of the final of this uh Tournament. So let's see, we need a bit of a miracle here, probably the kind that only a prime, a young prime Wayne Gretzky can provide here. And at the same time, speaking of excellent all-time great superstars in their prime, it's going to be a prime Sidney Crosby and quite arguably a prime Evgeny Malkin and Marc-Andre Fleury who are going to try to prevent that from happening. So period three gets underway here with another minute off the clock or with a minute off the clock that's the scoring chance right away for the Edmonton Oilers it is Wayne Gretzky with that scoring chance from the blue line where he did score earlier in this series but Marc-Andre Fleury comes up with the save this time up to minute four and 83 that's back the other way now a chance for Pittsburgh a few minutes later player C it's Pascal Dupuis Pascal Dupuis with it in the slot and Pittsburgh has entered the double digits for scoring as Pascal Dupuis has uh well put the penguins at 10 and i have to remember how i do this when it's a uh, 10 10 goals i think oh yes no that's right i can still just put this here and then go from zero to nine giving away my secrets here so zero one that's right okay and then we can do this i don't i don't get dub double uh, digits in scoring very often i mean this is hockey not you know football but uh but if this were a football game hold on now if this were an nfl football game 
the score would be 70 to 49. Although keep in mind this is, uh, or something like that. Keep in mind that this is a uh, two-game uh, series. Anyway, uh, so it is 10-7 here for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Two more minutes coming off the clock now. Edmonton really needs, uh, well, they've really got a lot of ga- uh, ground to gain. Unfortunately, it is Pittsburgh here with another scoring chance. Uh, player J on the Penguins, Paul Martin, actually the top defense unit. Uh, Paul Martin from the blue line, and he doesn't score from there. We play on another minute, comes off the clock here up to minute seven. And 87 here, scoring chance, watch it be Crosby's player F. Player F is Brandon Sutter on line three, four, Pittsburgh. Brandon Sutter with it in the faceoff circle. And look at that. Brandon Sutter has scored uncontested. I feel like maybe they were watching Brandon Morrow or Chris Letang or someone else here. We'll have to see. But now we have an 11 7 hockey game. The Penguins, after these teams sort of traded the lead back and forth there for about a game and a half, it is the Pittsburgh Penguins pulling away with it late. Here at 620 of period three, I looked at L3D2. So Sutter, he can't assist on his own goal. Sutter from Niskanen picking up another assist. And with the secondary, it is Bo Bennett. He has at least a couple of points. Again, I'm not keeping track, writing anything down, just going on memory. Bennett has a couple of points here in this uh, two game series as well. Anyway, one more minute coming off the clock here, so update to uh, eight minutes now. With the 98, it's been all Pittsburgh here in period three. Momentum is on their side. Momentum somehow is reflected in these cards. And uh, so player S for Pittsburgh, because the 98 was the previous card, yeah. Player S for Pittsburgh is Sidney Crosby, of course. Crosby here with it at the blue line where Gretzky did score. Crosby unable to score from there. Almost like he's trying to duplicate the great one somehow, replicate what he did. But it's going to be uh, uh, another minute here in 35 without a scoring chance for either side. We get up to minute 10. And no scoring chance either way this time either. So three more minutes coming off the clock. Now I think it's appropriate to say Edmonton is running out of time. And it looks like we're going to get a brawl. I might disallow that actually with about seven minutes to go. I'm not really in the mood for it. So, um, well, yeah, no. A couple of Z3s again. So sorry if that just means that I shuffled on well there mid-deck. But we're going to get two more minutes off the clock now. So we are up to minute 15. And with a 73, that'll be no chance for either team. So what is going on now? Pittsburgh, they've shut it down now that they're up by four. Uh, 63, that's no scoring chance either. So uh, we advanced to minute 19. I'm assuming Edmonton's actually probably, would they pull, you wouldn't pull your goalie at this point. Uh, 77 now. So anyway, another minute off the clock here. And let's see if we can't get one last chance. Actually, there will be one last chance. It will be for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And uh, Q is Bo Bennett. So Bo Bennett here, the fresh, the fresh man, been tagged on here late. And Bo Bennett has it in the slot where he scores. And Andy Moog just kind of throws his arms up. And uh, we now have a 12-7 hockey game here, courtesy of Bo Bennett in the final minute here. So Bo Bennett, a bit of a game two hero. His goal is really sort of... Um, uh, you know, his offense really helped provide insurance there and then some for Pittsburgh. So in 1945, we will say L3D1, that works. So R5, that doesn't work. But yeah, let's go Bennett from Brendan Sutter because it was Sutter from Bennett earlier. And uh, Bennett is the right wing. We'll just say maybe the one assist goal, Brendan, uh, uh, Bo Bennett from Brendan Sutter because, of course, at this point, uh, I don't really necessarily have a have a cup for this one or any kind of trying to think what I could do here. Uh, don't really have any post-game ceremony or anything like that. Sorry, you will have to use your your um, imagination. But it is, and I, I have to say, probably if I had to put the teams in order of who I thought would win when I set out to do this, I probably would have ranked Pittsburgh fourth. Um, yeah, but the Pittsburgh Penguins, I mean favoring evolution i guess even in that time warp um i guess yeah the the more complete uh, team one might argue has uh has managed to uh emerge from this one victorious uh it was a very close one against the uh, the toronto maple Leafs, and it was close here for about a game and a half and then all of a sudden damn just uh you know, late here in game two. And I tend to shuffle these even when I know that I'm not about to play them and so, or use them and, and play with them so that next time that I go to uh, to use these, I'll, I, I will use them knowing that they already have been shuffled a little bit and so I can just shuffle them just a little bit more and then I should be uh, good to go. So 
little habits. Anyway, uh, that's yeah, that's it for the series. So again, this was a, a four-team tournament featuring four of my father's uh, all-time favorite hockey players and his current favorite hockey player by way of his being active. Unlike the other the other three, Crosby is an active NHL player, and uh, so it is the active one who again has uh, emerged with uh, with the win here in this tournament. So congratulations to the 2013 Pittsburgh Penguins. A good go there for the runner-up Edmonton Oilers. And um, anyway, that's you know definitely it for me for the time being. So cheers, thanks, and uh, bye for now.